So this program is done. Now let's understand that in if else, right? We, we understand what is if, if else, right? But how to optimize it, right? So we will understand how to optimize the execution time, execution time. And this is not applicable to all the program. You have to understand when to use if else, when to use only if, right? Those things. So here, if you see, if percentage is greater than 80, let's assume. So let's make it 92 again, right? So if, if this is the marks, then, you know, automatically it will fall under greater than 80 percentage. Okay. So if this condition is true, why to, why to do all these things? We got it, right? That grade is A. So what you can do, you can put here else, okay, else, everywhere you can put else. So there are, if there are multiple condition check and you don't want to execute other parts, right, then put else, okay, else can have again if, right, so there are two, if, see, if the condition is just this, as we saw here, it's like, a particular condition is true, then do this thing. Else, do this thing. If the question is very simple, like, like uh, 10 is greater than 12, right? So you want to go to, if 10 is greater than 12, you know, do this thing. Or A is greater than B, do this thing. If A is not greater than B, then do this thing. But here there are multiple conditions, right? So you can put else, but again, you there is a condition check, right? So Condition will come with if only, right? So you are checking else if this is this, then do this thing. So this time, what will happen? It will come here. Let's put debug point again. So you'll understand what is happening this time. Okay. So if I right click here and I'll say debug as Java application. Okay. So let me. So this is debug window, right? It shows you at which line number you are, right? It shows like this, but as of now, we don't need it. Okay. So you are at this line. Okay. I'm running it line by line. It will print the percentage. Okay. You are at this point, 82.25. Fine. Percentage is greater than, see, 82.25 is greater than 80. Fine. So it will go inside this, right? It will go. Perfect. Now, once it will come out of this if, do you think it will execute all these things? No, it's going directly to end of the function. Means because there is no statement at 36th line, otherwise it will go to the 36th line. But it is not executing all this because all this part are else. Else means if this condition is false, then only do this thing. Right? Otherwise, you know, um, just execute this. It's like this. Done. So let me add another another line here so that you will get to know what I'm saying. I'll say end of program, something like this. I'm saying it here. And let me run this. And we will execute this again with another value. So for example, let's make this as 42. And let's make it make, make the student fail, right? So we will make it here 28. And this will make 17 marks. So this time it will be a very low percentage. So let's debug it again. So I'm saying debug as Java application. And this time, if you'll see, percentage is just a minute. So this time, if you see, percentage value is 40. Oh, it's still 40, but that's fine. Okay, going here. So it's checking if percentage is greater than 47. So it's checking 44.7 is greater than 80. No. So it is, again, you know, going to all this else, right? It's going it. But the good part is if 
it will be executed here. It will not go to the next else as of now. Let's let's see here. So it is it is checking now this. 44.75 is greater than 40. 44.75 is less than 60. So it will print grade C, right? But it will not now again check on the 32 line. It will not go there. See here. Okay, I'm doing I'm clicking one by one on step over. If you see here, it is directly going to the 36 line. It is not comparing this. So we are saving the time. So if this is fine, why to execute this? Correct. So we are saving the time and it's end of the program will be printed. Done. So somebody is asking what is the time complexity of this? So basically time complexity, there are two kinds of complexity. One is time complexity and space complexity. Okay. Time complexity, um, if you have read like uh, that data structure in your academic, we talk about it, right? So it is calculated on big O notation, right? So it depends on a lot of things, right? It depends on the number of lines, okay? How many lines you are executing. It, it depends on whether you have a loop how, how the number of lines are affected, right? So here, earlier, the time was based on how many if you have, right? So in that term, if you say that uh, n number of lines were there, right? So see, this execution will not take time. If you are thinking this execution will take time, computer is uh, very smart, right? This is negligible. The time to execute from line number 9 to line number 17 is negligible. It won't take. Means we can, we can just assume it's, it's, it tends to zero. Okay. Execution time generally takes on the comparison, on the loop, those kind of things. So earlier in that program, we were executing multiple things, right? We were executing... This line also, we were executing this also when else was not there. So let's assume earlier, it let's assume every line takes just for, a you know, uh, keeping it easy. So let's assume every line takes, let's assume one second. So earlier there were five comparison, okay, or, or five statement where the comparison is happening. So there were, one, let's assume that every comparison takes one second. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six comparisons. So it was taking six seconds. Okay. But now number of comparison are getting less now, right? So if you are falling under grade C, it's number of comparison is five now. If you are falling under just this, right? So number of comparison will be just one. It will avoid all these things. So it will be just one second. So you you can say it. Uh, it's taking n my. So you have to compare it. You cannot say this is the time complexity of this, right? You can say that if without using the time complexity was n, okay. Now the time complexity is n minus whatever you can say n minus one, n minus two, based on how many comparison you are avoiding now. Okay, it's like this. Fine. Okay. Another thing is here, if you see, we are hard coding all this. All the values are hard coded. So somebody yesterday asked that how to take these values uh, at runtime. Okay, so let's take it. So to take the values at runtime, so we are we are learning a new thing now. Let me write it in agenda. Um, accept values at runtime from user. So from user means whoever is executing the um, program. 
Okay, so let's let's understand. There are two terms: user and programmer. Programmer is who is writing the program. User is who who will give the data at runtime or who will see the data at runtime. As of now, as I am writing the program, I am the user. I am the programmer also. But in real life, what happens is program is written by someone else. User is someone else. Correct. Right? So. For that, you have to use a scanner class. Okay, so the way is understanding about the scanner class. So you have to declare scanner. Scanner. This is a kind of class which is present in util package. So Java provides a lot of packages by default. When you install JDK, right, it provides you. Um, different classes which will be useful for you to use it we are reusing it it's like this right we don't have to do much so if another thing whenever you write anything if you hover over it and if it is a defined thing in java it will tell you all the definition also it will tell you the example also how to use it right all these things see here it's saying you that you can do these things you can read it something from the file also lot of things it's saying right but for us for us as of now we are not reading it from the files basically we want to read it from the system so we'll copy this this is the syntax okay so i will use this syntax so it's saying scanner sc is equal to new scanner system dot a let's understand this 15th line what we are doing we are creating one scanner object okay and saying that in a simple word i am saying i'm not going into technicality part we are saying that we'll take the input from the system right so system has a lot of different functions one of the one of the uh, what we say uh, standard is input stream right so you can say system dot in so when you say system dot in what will happen at the run time whatever you will provide in this console um, window right that will be considered as input stream so whatever you are putting it from here through your keyboard keystrokes will be considered as input and scanner the name is also somehow they have made it simple scanner means scanning this it will scan this and whatever you will say it will do the thing it's like you prepared a rough rough page you pre you are preparing a rough page like this and saying hey whatever next will come you know take it and put it in a variable so as of now we want to take five values correct so it's better you ask first so you'll say to the user enter maths what was that english science history marks something like this you say it or you can do it one by one also i am singing okay let's do it one by one enter math marks okay and declare it first basically you don't have to do it here just declare you have to declare it once only so you are saying enter marks okay enter maths marks so what you will do here you will store it right so you will say maths is equals to sc dot it's not integer right you want to take it as double value so we'll say sc dot next double that's it then copy paste so now next thing will be asking them to put uh, let's say what was that english english marks then you will have english here then again you want to do this so you say enter science marks you will say science is equals to this then again you will have history okay and you will say History. Okay, done. 
that's it. Once you have that, right? So it will do the same thing. Okay, where was total? I deleted that line. No, no, this total will be calculated once you have all these marks, correct? So here it will come. Fine. So this time, if I'll execute it and do right click and say run as Java application, it's saying me enter maths marks. So I'll say 34, enter. It is asking me enter English marks. So I'll say 56. It is asking me science marks. So okay, 78. It is asking me uh, history marks. So let's say zero or just seven I got. Then if I hit enter, it is calculating all this thing. It's saying your total is this, your grade is this, end of program. Okay. It's very simple. You have to remember just one thing that there is a scanner object you have to use and just a single line, simple line. Scanner, you have to give a name. It's not SC every time you have to use. You can give any name here. But the thing is when you are using it, you have to use it the same thing, right? So if you are putting some other thing in the line number 19 also, you have to put the same variable name. Okay, so scanner SC is equal to new scanner. You will say enter maths marks. So it, you will be entering maths now. So what is happening? Let's understand. I said earlier, assignment operator is very important. It looks simple, but it's important. So what is assignment operator? Equal to sign says that Calculate the right hand side first, and whatever is the answer, assign it to the left hand side. Correct. So it will execute this part first. SC.next double means go to the input stream here and capture what user is saying and capture it as a double. So we are so this is like a pro, it is providing a, a sub function which is saying that you have so line number 17 is this enter maths marks, which is which is not making any sense. The thing is, whatever you will pay, print, it will be printed as it is, right? Just for the making it easy, just for making it more interactive, we are writing it like this, right? Enter maths marks, okay? Even if you will not write it, it's fine. Even without saying 17th line, you can put the marks directly in the uh, console window. But the problem, with that kind of program is you will not be able to see this kind of messages, right? So this is to make it more interactive. Otherwise, um, it's not required, right? Okay. Now you're saying sc.next double, that means what will happen, you are putting 34, right? So this 34, it will scan and it, it will take it as a double value and it will put it in, in max. It's like this. So you may be thinking, hey, it was 17. How we can take the values again? The thing is, it will be overwrite. It's not like that. You cannot change the value. Earlier, you have hard-coded it, 17 and all. So what will happen is, now the maths will become whatever user will give. Okay? It's like this. Same thing. You are saying enter English marks. So it will go to the English. Enter science marks. So it will go to the science variable. History marks, it will go to the history variable. Then you are doing plain mathematical thing. We have understood all these things already, right? Now the question is, can anybody tell me that still, still there is a problem. Still there is a problem that when user is grading, get, getting grade F, let's say, still we are doing a lot of comparison. Right? We are still doing a lot of comparison here. Correct. Are you agree with me? Let's run this so that you will understand what I'm saying. So this time we'll give a very less marks. Okay. Let's debug this. We'll give the maths as 10, 23, 34, and 30. That's it. So if you see here, we are at line number 35 as of now, going down. It's saying percentage is 24.25. Okay. It will print it printed. Now we are comparing percentage is greater than 80. No, it is going here. Because it why it's going here? 
because this is false. That's why it's going here. Otherwise, it will not go to the 44th line. Going here, but it compared, no? It's not like that going. So this condition is false. The percentage is 24.25, which is not greater than 60. That's why it has come out for 48th line. Now this will be true. So it will go inside and it will print grade F. But the problem is this all got executed. Whereas this should take, you know, directly to this. So what is the solution to this? Can anybody tell me what will be the solution? How we can further optimize this program? So, so as, we, as we said, it's still comparing, right? If you're going to the last one, it is still comparing all these things. So the solution is switch case. Uh, we'll see that in, in, in the future session. We'll talk about what is switch, how it works and all. That's it for today. We covered if else block. We talked about how we can optimize the execution time if there are multiple if conditions. And we, we saw accept values at runtime and scanner. We'll keep on talking about the scanner in, in you know, uh, future sessions because there will be a lot of programs where we have to take the program uh, values at the runtime.